There we go. <laughs> you know, it's a lot bigger than your face there, dude. <laughs> it's got a mustache. <laughs> yeah. Today I'm fishing a real clear water reservoir, middle of summer. It looks like all the little fish are out to play today, but that's all right. I'm out here just having fun. And on a day like today, it's easy to have 100 fish plus a day. So, <laughs> uh, I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm, I'm combining the best of two rigs here, drop shot and a wacky rig. And I'm jacking fish all day long doing this. I promise you it does catch bigger fish. So today, I'm going to show you how to rig all this up, what kind of equipment I'm using and why. And then I'm going to take you out in the lake. And I'm going to show you how the different techniques how to use the drop shot wacky rig Psycho. Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com. Today I want to talk to you about fishing a wacky rig drop shot Sanko. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm taking two different rigs, a wacky rig and a drop shot, and combining the two for a pretty darn effective bait. Now, if you don't know how to rig a drop shot, I've got a video on how to do that, and it's linked underneath this video for you. You can go take a look at that later. But today I'm going to talk about the different gear I use, the tackle I use to fish this, and then I'm going to show you on the water how to fish it. So first off, I've got this weight here. It's a, it's a quarter, or excuse me, this is an eighth ounce weight. And you can go up in size. You can go up to a quarter ounce or even larger if you want. But that's only if you're fishing deeper water or windy conditions. You know, that's the only time I'll really upgrade to a, a heavier weight. But this is just an eighth ounce. And that's the standard I, I go to all the time. Rigged on that is a, this is a, a size one, one aught hook. And of course, we've got the Sanko. Look at that. Rigged right like that. <laughs> Pretty cool. I'm using six pound copolymer line. And there's a reason for that. I'm not using fluorocarbon or braid. Braid is, tends to be more buoyant and it floats. Not totally floats, but it's more buoyant, and it's going to interfere with the action of this bait. And that's the key thing about fishing a drop shot, is you want it to be as natural as possible. You don't want anything to interfere with it. Matter of fact, I use a spin shot hook. That way it can move around freely as much as possible, and it's not going to interfere with the action of the bait. If I use fluorocarbon, a lot of people use fluorocarbon when they drop shot for the sensitivity, and you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. If, you, if you're comfortable doing that, knock yourself out. Use it all the time. But I use copolymer because fluorocarbon tends to, it, it gets heavy and sinks a bit. And again, that interferes with the bait, in my opinion. So that's why I like using copolymer. It's pretty much neutrally buoyant. And that way the bait can do its thing and look as natural as possible. So six pound, real light line. And because of that, I'm using a medium light action rod. It's got lots of flexibility in it here. And you need that. Because when you set the hook and you're fighting the fish back, you don't want to break the line, nor do you want to uh, bend the hook out. So you need that kind of flexibility, medium light action rod. So that's it. That's the gear. That's how we're rigging it today. Now let's go fish it. Okay, what I'm fishing here is an area that has rocky bottom with some scattered weeds. Great place to fish the drop shot rig. Now one of the things I didn't tell you about earlier was on this length. Yeah, we're starting with about 18 inches, but I'll change that length depending on the circumstances I'm fishing in. So for example, if I'm fishing in deeper water, fishing in clearer water, or during the summertime, I might move up to 24 inches, maybe even 30 inches, because the fish, they're actively feeding. They can see it from further distances. They're going to chase it further, so I want to get it up off the bottom a little bit further. Now, in, 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 if I'm fishing dingy water, or in the winter time, or in shallow water, then I'm going to shorten it up, maybe up to eight or ten inches, because the fish aren't going to chase us as far. I've got to get the bait right down to them. They're a little bit more lethargic, especially in the winter time. So shortening it up is a great way to go for, for those situations. Casting it out, you don't want to throw it really hard, because you might throw the bait off the hook. So just a real nice lob cast is all it takes. You can even underhand pitch it. That works just as well. And once it gets out there, you want to watch the line fall. Let it fall in slack line. Watch it very carefully where the line enters the water. Because sometimes the fish will bite it on the fall. And the only way you're going to tell is if you can see that line you know, pop, twitch, jerk, do something odd like that. That's when the fish bite it. So what you're going to do then is reel up the slack and just pull back on it hard. Not a hard hook set. It doesn't take much to set the hook on this rig. Again, it's an exposed hook. Light wire hook. 
you're using a six pound test line. If you set up really hard, you're probably gonna break the line or straighten out that hook. So it's just reel down firmly on it or pull back on the rod and you got them set. Got them set. So I'm gonna show you how to fish this now. You just cast it out there. Wow, that went a long way. That was a light cast. Notice I didn't even throw it very hard. But I'm watching it carefully, follow the bottom, making sure it doesn't twitch. Okay, it hit the bottom. And how do I know that? The line just went slack. It just went limp on me. So now all I want you to do is just reel up that slack and then hold it in place. That's all you're gonna do. Yeah, there you go, now I got it. So just hold it in place and hold it steady. Hold it steady, hold it steady. You're not gonna move the bait at all. I'm reeling up a little bit because the boat's moving, but that's all you wanna do. I know you think the bait isn't moving much, but if you take your hand and move it and put it in front of your face and hold it as steady as you can for 30 seconds, you'll notice that it is moving no matter how steady you try to hold it. That is being transmitted down the rod, down the line to the bait. In addition, there's always movement, there's always current in any body of water, even if it's a lake, whether it be wind-driven current, wave-driven current, there's always movement, and that is moving the bait as well. Plus, if you've got a breeze on the water, those little waves, they're lapping up along your line, and that's being transmitted down the bait as well. So just holding it steady, that bait is moving around enough that that'll attract the fish and they'll bite. Keep in mind, see, we're not covering a lot of water here. It's a real slow, methodical way of fishing. So this isn't a technique that you want to use to cover a lot of water and to find fish. This is what you use after you've found the fish, you've located where an area that they're hanging out on, and you want to pick that apart and get every fish you can. This is the tactic you employ. So once you've done this for a while, you just hold it steady. Now all you're gonna do is just drop the rod tip a bit down and just shake it. Just shake the tip of the rod, not much. It doesn't take much at all, and then hold it. Now you got their attention, they might come back and bite it and hold it for as long as you can stand it. Then what you're gonna do is just move the bait a little bit, lift up the rod, reel up the slack, let it drop, and start over again. Just hold steady, don't do anything. And every once in a while, just shake the rod tip. That's all it's gonna take. And that's all there is to it. The drop shot's very, very simple. It doesn't take much to entice the bite, but again, it's, it takes patience. That's what it takes. A lot of patience to fish it. Now, the areas to fish it and when to fish it. During the, the summertime and in the wintertime, that's when the bulk of the fish are out in the main lake in a little bit deeper water. So those times of the year, I'll be fishing main lake points, creek channels, creek bends, where especially where it swings up close to the shoreline. I'm fishing rock piles, humps, ledges, drop-offs, those type of things. That's what I'm gonna be targeting during those times of the year. In the spring and in the fall, that's when most of the fish move up shallow to feed. So I'll go right with them. I'll go to the back of creek channels, back of coves, protected bays, uh, secondary points, and, and in flats, especially grassy flats. I'll be targeting those areas during those times of the year. If you do that using this technique, again, after you've located the fish, you're going to have a whole heck of a lot of fun. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com. Hey, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And if you want to watch more videos like this, click one of the images on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.